Yeah, so this is a continuation in the series we've been doing about why teachers teach or how they uh, decide to teach and why they get out of the profession of teaching. And today we're going to look at skill set. Skill set. I'm going to do an education blog today and I want to introduce it by showing y'all a couple of things that are uh, really kind of prized possessions of mine. They belong to my grandfather. Um, and they're these sets of uh, books. And if you remember back in the 70s uh, and uh, into the 80s, they would advertise these Time Life books. And um, this is the Civil War set of books. And, you know, it has all these pictures and all this detailed information, volume after volume. These are the Old West books that, you know, were produced uh, back then. I believe this may have been the first series they produced. And then later on, um, Time Life produced a World War II set of books. As a kid, when I would come home from school, uh, I loved to sit down and look through these books. And over time, uh, you know, that kind of became my love uh, was for history. Uh, and, you know, back then, the typical way that most people would end up becoming teachers is they would find out, you know, I'm really good at history. Um, I'm really good at math. I'm really good at this subject. I like this subject. So uh, a lot of people would say, well, you need to become a teacher. You, you're so good at this. You, you have such a good memory for this. You have such a good acumen for this. You need to become a teacher and teach kids about history or teach kids about math. So that's how I became a teacher with that mindset. And a lot of people that became teachers when I became a teacher had that mindset. Um, but that's not the mindset anymore. When I became a teacher, it took a skill set uh, that basically required a, an extensive content knowledge. That's what we were focusing on. That is what uh, the colleges of education taught. Uh, that is... Uh, the basic thing that people would look at is do you know enough to teach this subject? Do you know enough math to teach a high school math class? Do you know enough history to teach a high school history class? If you did and you had the ability to get along with young people you know relatively well, you could follow directions, you could basically do things that any other person in any other job could do and uh, you know you felt good about doing that, you could be a teacher. You, you just needed to do what they told you to do. And you could go into a classroom, you could teach. The kids generally would listen as long as you were halfway uh, interesting and you halfway knew what you were doing. The kids would pretty much do what you told them to do for the most part. Now, not every kid was like that, but for the most part, it was, it was uh, you know, didn't take a, a tremendous ability to entertain. Now, today, the skill set for teachers is drastically drastically different. As a matter of fact, I've looked through several websites here over the last week or so and they hardly mention content knowledge when it comes to a skill set that a teacher needs. Now obviously I think they you know understand, people understand I need to know how to do these things to be able to teach them to other people, but that's not the number one concern anymore. It's not even remotely the number one concern. As a matter of fact, some of these sites don't even mention that that is a skill that you need to have to teach. So older teachers, that was our thing, especially secondary teachers. Now today, the uh, websites focus a lot on more about creativity. Uh, they focus more about technical skills, being able to use technology, things like that, being able to plan, being able to develop lessons, things like that. Those are, you know, there's a long list of things that you need to be able to do. Uh, being able to collaborate with other teachers, uh, being able to come up with new ideas, being able to have a positive learning environment, uh, being able to counsel, being able to handle exams, being able to uh, helping kids learn how to study, you know, being able to deliver the material the right way. There are just tons and tons and tons of all these skills that are listed and they're all important. But the, the basic thing that I'm focusing on today is this. When I became a teacher, the number of people in the population that had the skill set that it took to teach was higher because there were a lot fewer skills required. Today, the list has become so extensive and the number one thing 
is being able to manage the classroom and organize the classroom. Because students today, uh, if you can't go in that classroom and just wow these students, if you can't go in that classroom and be able to relate to them, you know, there's all these things that they expect. You know, they're used to being entertained. They're used to doing stuff on a computer. They're used to doing stuff, you know, getting stuff, immediate feedback, things like that. And if you're not keeping pace and you're not doing things pretty quick, you, you can lose them pretty quickly. And, you know, we've talked about before the respect for the for educators and things like that is a lot lower than it used to be. People don't just automatically go in the classroom and do what the teacher says. So today, the number of people that have those skill sets is a lot smaller. There's way fewer people that have the ability to walk into a classroom of 13 year olds, 15 year olds, 16 year olds, grab their attention get them to pay attention, get them to do what they need to do, uh, having the just innate ability to be able to relate to kids and be able to, you know, see what's happening in your classroom and hit it off before it gets out of control and things like that. The number of people that can do that is way smaller than the number of people back when I started that to just go in and knew a lot about World War II. That, that's not what it takes anymore. So what we have done is we have a job that a lot of people don't want to do anymore because of the you know the respect issue the the idea that teachers are not held in esteem you know and by society things like that 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 drives a lot of people away from the job uh, a lot of people would say the pay drives a lot of people away from the job I, I have a different opinion about that but uh, it's not a job that pays all that great it's not a job that you're going to go in and necessarily not everybody feels a sense of accomplishment because they're having to work so hard doing all these other things that don't have anything to do with teaching the kids that they don't really feel that they're doing a good job. They don't really feel necessarily that they're appreciated. They don't feel, you know, they don't look at it and say, you know what, I'm really accomplishing a lot here. It's hard to get that feeling a lot of times in teaching unless you can do it on a day-to-day -day basis and you can see how kids are learning in your classroom, but a lot of people don't, ha don't see that. They have a hard time with that, especially new teachers. So you have that going. So if you have a job that already faces a situation where there's not a lot of people going into it to start with, there's not enough people going into the field of teaching already, and then on top of that, you pile on the, uh, you know, the number of teachers that get out of the profession in the first one to three years, and all those people leave, it makes it very difficult to, you know, to get the number of teachers we need. I've always felt, uh, you know, so since I became an administrator, that we can get people hired. It's hard to get people hired that are just qualified to teach. But finding people that can really teach today's kids and really teach in the environment that it that, that exists today with the behavior and the you know the requirements for all the administrative things teachers have to do that are outside of the classroom the vast majority of their day is spent doing things that have nothing to do with actually you know ground level teaching the kid in my classroom it's all these other things that you know may be important but it makes the job much tougher. So the skill set required today is one of the reasons why a lot of people leave the profession. And it's a lot of, uh, it's a big reason on why people don't enter the profession. But obviously the skill set that it took when I began is entirely different than the skill set that it takes now. And it changed completely. It changed totally from when it was, uh, from what it was when I started. And probably people that are in education today 30 years from now, it's not even going to be remotely close to the skill set that was needed when they started. And that's just part of, uh, it's part of teaching. So hopefully uh, you guys that are starting out will be able to hang with it. Uh, but anyway, you guys have a good day. Nichols Retirement Empire. If you haven't subscribed, look at some of the other educational blogs that I've done and subscribe. And uh, I do about one a month. So you guys have a good day.